Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. Today is uh, Monday, August 26, 2024. This is Dale Woodson, editor of Woodson Wave Report. And the YouTube channel, we want to get our YouTube subscribers caught up. Our newsletter subscribers get reports every day. We try to update you guys as often as we can. Uh, speaking of updates, I want to let you guys know that uh, we have an Elliott Wave Hub uh, tomorrow. Uh, it starts at 9 a.m. I think there's eight speakers. I'll be um, presenting at 2 p.m. There's the registration link there. I'm going to try to pin that down in the comments below. But uh, everyone, including including yours truly, has some special offers for those of you who watch live and, and attend. So love to see you in the room. There's the link there. Um, again, I'll be uh, speaking at uh, at 10 a.m. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, I think I'm going to uh, whip out a new Fibonacci time spiral. So um, that'll be something exciting to look forward to. Okay. Let's uh, get on with our analysis. We haven't done this in a while, but I want to take a look at the big picture here. We have, uh, I'm going to make this a big screen. We have a weekly log chart of the S&P 500. I'll take you guys from how I learned it um, way back in 1996. Uh, the first the first wave I saw was a triangle, and it took me months of charting on a wall chart uh, on graph paper, trying to learn Elliott Wave back in 1996. And I'm like, this I don't see five waves anywhere. Well, it turned out it was a triangle. So so by default or luck or whatever you want to call it, I learned a fourth wave first which are the hardest to trade and some people think the hardest to spot. But for me, after doing this for over like 25 years, you can't get a four by me. And this one we called early. We called this one back around this B wave high. We thought this could be a, a triangle and it was an expanding one. Some people call it a bullhorn. But anyway, this is the big picture. Again, a weekly log. This goes back to 2018. You can see the A down, B up, C down. D up and E down to complete four. Okay, so you can look backwards from there and say, okay, then we have to have a, a one and two from that three. That's obvious. If that's a four, then that's a three. So we go back in time and I've got a black wave count and a purple wave count. I left them both up there, but uh, our one is back there from the 2009 low. So we have a one up, a two down, three up, fourth wave expanding triangle, and at this time, as this was making a new high, we were expecting, obviously, a thrust higher out of a fourth wave triangle. That's why uh, R.N. Elliott described it will thrust out, and it should go in the direction of the trend it was going before the triangle. So, as you can see here, the trend was up. So, out of the triangle, the trend continues up. And I said at the time, way back then, that this would either be five or one of five. Well, it didn't take too long to see that it was one of five, okay? So we have the uh, the fourth wave with a circle completed and we got one in parentheses of five, two in parentheses of five, and then the third wave is subdividing or extending and within that wave three with a parentheses, we have a one up, a two down, a three up, a four down, and five equals one at six zero six nine. Okay, that's the... Uh, the high to date on July 17th. I think the futures was on the 16th. We'll see how that plays out. And if you want to look at the uh, the bigger wave count, the one with the parentheses, the two with the parentheses, three equals one at 61.18. This is the most bullish count we have. We've had it for quite some time, but that is the bigger picture. Okay, so um, if this purple wave count is right, we have a one up, a two down. The next high should be in the 6,000s, and it'll be wave 3. It'll be followed by wave 4 down, which will hold above the wave 1 high of 48.18, and that'll be followed by a 5 up. Uh, that's the most bullish. Of course, we know where it's where it's wrong. You know, if this thing tops out, and then that 48.18 is taken out, or this, uh, this wave 1 high here, which is even lower, so that would go first, then um, we'll know we have a reversal in trend, which... We look for every day. We've been doing it since October, and our triggers and targets, which we'll get into, has kept us on the right side of the market for almost a year now. 
don't know if we need to go any lower on the s p i think we'll go right to the es speaking of triggers and targets you guys have seen this before but we started this back one trading day after the october 27th low in 23 we had an upside trigger and we didn't get another one until um this is re reproposed if you will up here this isn't october 30th this way back here but i put it there to fit it on the page because we had one two three four five upside triggers we had targets we have profits okay again repeating these are not actual profits these are potential profits and you never get a hundred percent of the move i had one the other day but the, when you get them you do backflips or handstands in your head because uh, they don't happen very often but anyway if you um you bought a contract here this is futures and added one at every trigger you would have five and you would have a, a big total gain of um 108,000. that's maximum that's potential that's not actual after that we had three downside triggers you can see here there's the work on those with 29.8 again potential not actual then we had a uh, four upside triggers after that okay and you can see that right there but there's um the times i'm sorry the dates and the prices there i had to squeeze them all in here there they are there 515 uh, 611 617 and 73 to lead into that high and then we had a down we had a, a trigger and a target down there for a nice little gain and then we had this one downside trigger that was good for a day it's on 87 i think it's right here this red bar it gave us a nice decline for a day but then it made a higher high so i would call that a fail um if you were good enough to get out as it made a new high you might have gotten some gain but uh that wasn't quite as uh, profitable or as long lasting and then the market reversed and then we had the uh, most recent trigger on a 13. okay you see the uh the profit and the uh, point gains there that's a daily chart of the ES. Let's get into the um, hourly. And you can see the all-time high here is July 16th. By the way, we had a nice ending diagonal to notify us that uh, ending diagonal is the end of the move. It's a fifth wave. Beginning diagonal is the beginning of the move in a first wave. Ending diagonal is where four overlaps one. Breaks down into three waves. One, three, and five overlap and it signals the end of a move let's make that bigger the end of a move and a reversal and trend we got it we were on it and so we've got an a down a b up and a c down okay um had a couple direct hits on those that's nice to get a direct hit on these moves up because you can really take advantage of these moves down after this wave four high and after this b wave high over here okay they came within what three or four points this one's within two this one's within four okay so then uh that was our actual and we weren't too far off on that either okay then we have another upside trigger here uh, i don't have all the triggers and targets here they're on the other page but you can see here we've got that high on 822 made a slightly higher high here you can see i wrote in an ascending triangle we got a flat top and an ascending bottom okay that'll be an a b c d e i may have that uh, drawn out on uh, the report i'll show you in a little bit okay but um we're looking for if this is one up and this is two down here is three so far if that triangle holds okay but we've got three equaling a 2.618 at 57.96 okay if this is three up and four down then five equals one at 58 54 50. okay you can see we got some triggers over there but uh if this is three up here are the fibonacci retracements for wave four and as you can see this has come nowhere near those yet so this four could still be developing this three could be extending up to here or it could be a really shallow four ascending triangle and then we go up to wave five we'll have to see how that plays out course with our monthly subscribers we look at the very smallest degrees of trend one minute ten minute hourly sometimes and then uh, we'll catch those uh changes in trend we have five parameters and they haven't been met since that october low of last year so 
again, those triggers and targets and those parameters have kept us on the right side of the market for almost a year now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, that's the ES on an hourly. Maybe we'll get into the, that's more of the hour. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's that triangle again and those targets. I think I may want to get into a little shorter term. But again, there's that triangle there and, and the fallout from it. And you can see the uh, five ways down. I like looking at the 10 minute to trade and the one minute for entries. But uh, that's um, pretty much what's going on a very short term. I want to show you guys our uh, our market close report. Is that uh, the one from today? Yeah, I believe it is. Okay. And uh, let's get down here. Again, we got the free gifts from the uh, Elliott Wave Hub here and the uh, continuing triggers and targets uh, discount, if you will. You can just put in 44 and get the $44 discount for the entire life of the of the of your subscription we've never offered anything like that before anyway um here's the uh chart from the newsletter you can see there's that ascending triangle there's those wave four targets there's where three extends to a 2.618 multiple which is very possible since this four pullback is not much but it sure looks like a triangle like i said first pattern i learned was a four so uh hard to sneak one by me okay that's what, a lot of sideways top here for basically the last week, which is the definition of a four, long and sideways overlap, chop, 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 okay? And uh, I think that's a lot of verbiage there. Here's those change in trends that we look for. And um, we need to see all five of these for the first indication of a change in trend. We've gotten the fourth one before, but it always craps out. Okay, we've gotten five down, three up, five down to a lower low and then a rise higher in wave four and then it craps out usually right there on number four all of them have so far so here we are again and unless and until these steps for a change in trend are met the trend remains up okay and then we'll get into the uh we'll announce that new fibonacci time spiral at that uh elliott wave hub event tomorrow again there's the advertisement then see if uh, there i can see if i can get that uh into the um, comments down there and uh, get it pinned to uh, the YouTube video when we're done here. Okay, that's it again uh, for today. Hope to see you guys at the Elliott Wave Hub. And until next time, take care, everyone.